never seen a storm like it, the ice storm of 1991. Good evening and thanks for joining us. For the next hour, we're going to do what many of you called in and asked us to do, show our special coverage of this ice storm. We will take you back in time, beginning with Sunday night, as the freezing rain was falling in our homes, trees, and power lines. And we'll end with the latest on the storm aftermath. At this very minute, we are, as we are coming to you live, there are many, many people still without power. And now let's start with Sunday. This is what meteorologist John Hamilton had to say when he began his 11 p.m. weathercast. This is gonna be the winter storm that we have missed, you know, the bullet, all, and this time, uh, snow lovers are getting cheated. We would probably have 10 inches to a foot oh, of really? snow if it was all snow. Unfortunately, it is freezing rain and sleet. And so we went to sleep. Even with that warning, no one knew how bad this storm was going to be. When we woke up, ice was everywhere. Here's how we covered the storm in a special one-hour edition of News Team 10 at 6. Giant slabs of ice falling down onto Chase Lincoln Square. Trees down, power out. Ice has covered our community. Dramatic rescues and bad accidents. Team coverage of the ice storm is next on News Team 10. From WHEC TV, this is Rochester's News Team with Janet Lomax, Gabe Dalmuth, Meteorologist John Hamilton with live Rochester Doppler radar and Rich Funky on sports. This is News Team 10. A state of emergency remains in effect tonight. It's situations like this one that are making our area a very dangerous place. Good evening, Janet. It's off tonight. It's one of the worst storms ever to hit this area. We have extended News Team 10 team coverage to include a live update from RG&E Command Center, hundreds of thousands are without power. David Biggie on the widespread damage. And Vanessa Tyler reports on the state of emergency and what that means. First, Gabe, here's the latest assessment on the number of homes still without electricity. Rochester Gas and Electric estimates 150,000 customers without power. Niagara Mohawk has an additional 80,000 homes in the dark. 2,500 homes are without power in the Fairport Electric District. And New York State Gas and Electric in the Southern Tier reports an additional 15,000 customers without power. It seems the uh, suburbs around Rochester took the brunt of the damage from the storm. All day, reporter David Biggie and photographer Pat Campbell surveyed the damage. They saw how the storm affected property and people. In Webster, the storm damage was unforgiving. On each road, at every block, cars and homes were draped in an icy prison. On Creek Street, motorists ignored the warnings and weaved through fallen power lines. Others drove across front lawns. Residents said it felt like chaos. Their cars were coming and, and stopping, and I thought they had the roads blocked both sides. Here's what's going to happen. If this comes this way, boy. Power crews responded where they could, but for every job completed, two others popped up. Volunteer fire and ambulance squads had their hands full, too. It's difficult to tell. We got lines down. We got 140 people who want their basement pumped out. Oh, you guys do that? Yeah, we've got, yeah. So we've got enough to do right now. But we're not pumping any basements right now yeah. until the power comes back on because it doesn't do us any good. On Embury Street, 80-year-old Clifford Cochran was taken to Rochester General after he fell on debris in his front yard. Now, I've never seen anything like this. Back like on Creek down. Street, David Hines down. worried about his 200-year-old elm. After two centuries, this storm brought the mighty tree down. What was going through your mind as you heard the noises and the sounds? Well, I just was wondering if the tree was going to come through the house. You know, the kids were sleeping upstairs, so we just got them downstairs and just hoping that it didn't hit the car or come through the house. Pretty scary time for you. Oh, yeah. It was a sleepless night. There were also problems in basements where many residents woke up to several feet of water. The basement's flooded and, you know, no heat and everything, so still a lot of damage, too, to pick up afterwards. So, yeah, it's just starting, I think. Well, it's a big pain in the tail end, I'd say. <laughs> it's going to take a long time to get sorted out, I'm sure.
In Irondequoit, more problems. On Walzer Road, Larry Milligan awoke to find a tree sharing space with his family. Well, this, well really, it's quite pretty, but uh, I've never seen a mess like this. I, I remember the ice storm in 76 or 77, nothing like this. This is, this is a disaster. First thing we thought of, it was Baghdad. It may not be Baghdad, but it sure felt like a war zone with things so out of control, almost beyond control. David Biggie, News Team 10. Let's take a look at a dangerous scene downtown earlier. This is uh, Lincoln First Tower. You see the giant slabs of ice falling hundreds of feet. The tower was closed, as were many of the businesses downtown. One window was broken, but luckily no one was hurt. The ice appears to have been an inch thick. Another example of the danger of being outside today, this is Post Avenue on the city's west side. A 75-year-old woman, identified as Jean Cushman, was struck in the head by a tree limb. She was helping neighbors pull branches off the street. Many city-sized streets, which enjoy a canopy of shade in the summertime, Looked like war zones, as David mentioned. Uh, Gene Cushman is in satisfactory condition at Highland Hospital. And believe me, this was just the beginning. When our special continues, we'll show you what was going on at the 911 center. Do you have wires down in your backyard? Yeah. Yeah. ASAP fire site. What's your call back number, sir? <laughs> Sir, well, you can't call every five minutes, okay? We're in a state of emergency, and as soon as someone's available. City fire. And we'll take you inside the RG&E Command Center, where it was just as busy. And later, we'll show you what the storm looked like from the air. The county executive surveying the damage. This is a News Team 10 special, the ice storm. Check the content of some advertising media, and this is what you'll find. Maybe that's why year after year, this one carries so much weight with your customers. The official Rochester Telephone Yellow Pages. With Ruby Gordon Zoom delivery, everything in stock is delivered the same day. No hassle, no waiting, no kidding. Zoom delivery only at Ruby Gordon. If we didn't put this much into them, we wouldn't put our name on them. Mm. What was that? What was what? I heard a noise. Oh, it's nothing, honey. Oh. There it is again. What? It's that noise again. When you go back to sleep, I told you it's nothing, honey. There's no mistaking that nut and honey taste. Crisp flakes of corn smothered in sweet honey and roasted peanuts. Now I suppose that was nut and honey. Nope. Kellogg's nut and honey. That was the milk. Crunch. Welcome back to our special program on the ice storm. We're still taking a look at last Monday, the first day we saw the damage. Other highlights, a state of emergency was declared in Monroe County along with Livingston, Ontario, Wayne, Genesee, Yates, and Orleans counties. Mail was not delivered. At one point, some throughway entrances were closed, and the calls to the 911 center and RG&E would not stop. Hey, sir, we'll get somebody there right away. ASAP fire truck. 911 center. Welcome to the busiest place in the county today. City fire. If you had an emergency, chances are you called here, you and everybody else. Sir, well, you can't call every five minutes, okay? We're in a state of emergency, and as soon as someone's available. The state of emergency kept police, fire, ambulance, and 911 operators without a moment to take a breath. We've been handling 2,000 calls an hour since before midnight. 2,000 calls an hour, what's your average? We average around 2,000 calls a day this time of year. What's that? That's the number of calls waiting to be answered, uh, that we do not have someone available to handle at this time. If you want to know where county leaders were all day, this was it. 
The Office of Emergency Preparedness was fully staffed first thing this morning. Officials manned phones. Every police department was represented. Many double staffed on the streets. Even the sheriff handled calls. Never have I seen anything quite like this. I think the, the, the worst part when this is over is going to be that, that it's going to look like a different community, unfortunately, than it did before. Uh, the biggest problem in, in the middle of it is to, to make sure we get those trees, the fallen trees, out of the way and, and get traffic and, and uh, movement restored. By late this afternoon, officials were still here. This briefing aired live on News Team 10. As night falls, the biggest needs will be for heat and electricity. To that end, shelters have been set up countywide, like this one at MCC run by the Red Cross. People can come here for the comforts of home, since many homes in our area are cold and dark. We just received a call from a group home that's concerned about um, what they'll do with the residents in the group home uh, as night comes on and it's getting colder. Even keeping warm became dangerous. Are the children conscious at this time? Back at the frantic 911 center, this call from a family who tried to warm the children in the car while in a closed garage. Carbon monoxide poisoning is suspected. The children are out on the lawn at this time? Are they breathing? They expect to stay this busy all night. You got a tree down where? As the state of emergency continues. Vanessa Tyler, News Team 10. Most emergency calls involved two words, wires down. And in neighborhood after neighborhood, the question people asked each other, do you have power? Ray Lovato is standing by live at rg &E's command center. Ray? Laura Gabe, those uh, who are watching us tonight are either in one of those rare unaffected areas or have a battery-powered TV. But a good number of people are not tuned in because they are still without electricity. And the task of getting them back on is monumental. Hard road at Cannon Circle. The call started about 11 last night and just kept coming by the hundreds. By morning, the magnitude of the problem was clear. The worst ice storm in anybody's memory. On Ogden Center Road, seven poles had come down. Here, like in most areas, the storm presents a paradox. The almost eerie, surreal beauty of the ice-encased branches giving way under the weight of the ice, sounding like crackling gunfire. On the other hand, the devastation is very real. Miles of wires were down or drooping under the weight of the ice and tree limbs. Dozens of intersections still did not have working traffic lights. To augment its own line crews, rg &E is bringing in 39 emergency crews from five other utilities. It's quite a kind of a hassle getting up there. Once you get up there, it's not a real big job. But Getting up, up the there. pole. Yeah. yeah. Jack Jackling and John Vanderkamp, like other crews, worked 16 hours straight. Here, a 34,000 volt transmission line taken out when a neutral or ground wire came down. This line from the Russell station takes power to substations where distribution lines then bring the electricity to homes. One line, hundreds of dark houses. With me now is rg &E spokesman Mike Power. Some customers restored tonight, but the vast majority not till tomorrow and after? Very few customers probably in all, uh, in all frankness will be restored tonight and uh, very few tomorrow. This is going to be a very long one, unfortunately, more than likely end of the week before the last few people get on. There was no room at the inn on Monday. Almost every hotel and motel around here was full. This was the scene at the Holiday Inn downtown, which was sold out. Dogs and kids roaming about the lobby as families checked in to keep warm. For many without power, the hotel was the only answer. The house was getting colder and the kids were sick last week, so I didn't want them in a cold house. Um, family, we could have gone there, but I think the house is already filled up. And some folks who could not get a room in town had to travel out of town. I had to do that. My family spent the night in Buffalo because of no rooms here and because of the cold. Candles, generators, battery-powered radios and TVs. Did you have all those items in your house before the storm? If the answer is no, you weren't alone. Wendy Rye took a look at that problem in our Monday 11 o'clock newscast. No, ma'am, we're all out of generators. This is what people at Duran's Rental are saying to hundreds of callers. And for those customers stopping by, this sign tells the story. No gas pumps, generators, batteries, kerosene, or propane heaters are left. No generators, no gas pumps. Any no idea where I get one? No, not really. Uh, about everyone has exhausted their supplies. The store supply was gone within one hour today. Only a few chainsaws were returned by the end of the day. 
It saved one generator for itself. Store manager Jack Anderson says the last time he ran out of stock was almost 25 years ago. We're basically out of anything gasoline powered. However, uh, they can continue to try and call us because some of the things do come and go. Generators aren't the only thing selling out. People are also trying to keep warm by starting fires. But at Wegmans, the shelves for fireplace logs are virtually empty. Mary Patch of Fairport was lucky to get some logs and other supplies before they disappeared. I am buying um, meat I can cook on a barbecue grill, Pine Mountain logs to keep our family room warm. I have bread and coal cuts and some milk I'm going to have to keep out on the deck. That's it. It's just to keep us surviving. And at this crowded store, ice, candles, and batteries are also checking out fast. Mm -hmm. I guess those would be all right. The batteries are practically sold out. The, um, I believe we have, we got C. I don't think we have any more D, sir. But Wegmans and Durans both expect more supplies to become available and are asking customers to hang in there and be patient. Wendy Wright, News Team 10. And a reminder, some of us are still in need of those items because the power has not been restored. Bought a generator, but still stocking up on batteries ourselves. When our special on the ice storm continues, we'll move on to Tuesday to see the extent of the devastation. But first, here's a brief look at a video essay of photographer Gretchen Canan. Some called it The Beauty and the Beast. In the dairy section, there's a snack that's chillin' For all us homeboys with taste buds illin' The best part of the pizza, such a treat You're gonna find yourself doing it and chewing it Now everybody sing Polio string Polio Polio string cheese It's the pizza cheese snack that makes your lips smack So take it from the bird, polio is the word Polio string cheese The best part of the pizza Word Listerine kills germs. It hits plaque above the gum line. Listerine battles the gum disease, gingivitis, in big fight tonight. It's a right. And another right. Listerine really rocked him. It's over. The winner. Listerine antiseptic. It says what it does. It does what it says. I'm Chuck Wood, and my associate, David Strassman, is now going to demonstrate how to load a Chevy S10 pickup. First, give it a V6 engine, and that's in a stereo cassette, sliding rear window, rear step bumper, sport wheels, a Tahoe trim package, and more. Now, how do you unload it? Just give it a price that's easy to handle. Only $89.95 after cash back. Now at your Monroe County and hometown Chevy dealers. You got the right one, baby. Uh -huh. You got the right one, baby. Uh -huh. You got the right one, baby. You got the right thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You got the right one. Uh -huh. Everybody. Uh -huh. Oh, time is sleeping. You got the right one. Uh -huh. There's only one right one, baby. You got the right one, baby. Uh -huh. With 100% Nutrisweet. Price peanut butter. Is it possible to produce a premium quality peanut butter without the premium price? The Peter Pan people proudly proclaim positively. To prove this proposition, Peter Pan was pitted against a pair of pricier peanut butters. A panel of particularly picky people passed up those pricier products and preferred Peter Pan. Proof positive, Peter Pan is a premium peanut butter without a premium price. Please pick up Peter Pan promptly. Next, we turn to Tuesday, and life was not much better for many of us. At that point, 118,000 rg and &E customers were without power. More than 1,000 people spent the night in shelters, and County Executive Tom Fry took a helicopter tour of the area. County Executive Tom Fry is bracing himself for the worst. This is the first time he'll have an idea what the ice storm has done to the county. Crews were on the job, and from the air, the damage was clear. We got a good view of, of the transmission system and some spots where there was work being done that immediately related to that overall transmission system. 
Fry says the priority is to get the lights back on. We also got an impression that, that uh, some of the, 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 the uh, uh, distribution system, that is where it's going directly into the houses, that's more of a problem, it appears, uh, in the city. Now, while Fry surveyed the damage from the air, Tom Ryan took a look at things from the ground as the mayor toured his ice city. I think the biggest concern we have is the question of public safety. Uh, there are still a lot of uh, branches that have ice on them. Ryan, along with city officials and school superintendent Peter McWalters, took a van ride through icicled neighborhoods. And yes, there'll be no school again tomorrow. State help will be coming in the form of work crews. Even state prisoners will help clear these trees. Ryan has even considered asking the National Guard for help. It's a question of the more help we get, it, the quicker we can get the cleanup. But I mean, uh, if you look at the amount of trees and uh, branches and limbs that are out there, I mean, uh, this is not going to be cleaned up in a, in a matter of a couple of weeks. And if you haven't paid already an inconvenience, RG&E has hinted the ice storm could cost us in higher bills because of the expense of getting things back to normal. Vanessa Tyler, News Team 10. Also on Tuesday, optimism from RG&E. Power had been restored to some of the main power lines. Here's what an RG&E spokesman told us on Tuesday's edition of News Team 10 at 6. Well, that is the good news of the day, that uh, most of that transmission uh, system is now back in. I say most of it. We expect uh, the, the last bit of it uh, to get in tomorrow. That's not saying that uh, some more lines won't trip out, uh, Gabe, as, uh, as limbs continue to fall. But, uh, yeah, we've made some progress. We've picked up some, uh, some uh, very important parts of the system today. RG&E officials were hoping that power would be back for customers by the end of the week. Power companies were coming in from throughout the Northeast to help our local utilities. Here's Donna Didi with that part of the story. In Ogden today, like most places, if you saw this, it was out of the ordinary. This was more the norm. Utility poles snapped in two, wires drooping. And most of all, no power. And that's where a power cavalry of sorts came to the rescue. Our g and &E crews now work side by side with crews from out of state. In this case, they're from Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Cut that, so there'll be nothing coming from the 115 back this back way. This way? Yeah. Well, the biggest thing for us is uh, it's a strange system. We don't know which way it's feeding. Uh, safety is our main concern. Many of these men, like Butch Barber, are no strangers to lending a helping hand to a neighboring utility. He's a veteran of ice storms and hurricanes. Yeah, the ice and everything is just, it's beautiful to look at, but you can tell they had a lot of damage up here. Uh, it's, I can't believe it's the area covered. Today, they worked on main lines first, the stragglers later. Given the magnitude of this job, our g and &E crews welcome the help. And then you've got that backup, so it's really nice to have when you need it, and we need it. Even though you come from different parts of the country, it seems like everybody has the um, same mindset. And from the local crews to their new comrades, a big thanks. Real big. When we get done with this, we're going to probably have a party for them. Our G&E may be willing to throw these crew members from out of town a big party once all of this is finished, but you never know when they might have to reciprocate in person come the next ice storm in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Donna Didi, News Team 10. Call it a sign that things are getting back to normal. That's right, phone over pizza is on the road again. Well, as you saw just now, the, uh, the ice keeps falling on the, on the cars. But other than that, it's really not all that bad. All around town, people were back on the streets, browsing and shopping. At Allen's Hardware, business was booming. Do you have smaller ones? <laughs> okay, how about nine volt, no, I mean six volt la lantern okay. battery? They keep coming in, and we keep trying to help them, but it's getting difficult. People also spent the day stocking up on groceries, buying those essentials that everybody needs, and also emergency items that nobody seems to have. My mission, dinner. <laughs> For many, though, shopping was mission impossible. The only candles left were the wild scented variety, and believe it or not, this store has run out of bagged ice. Still, for people living in the dark without heat, being here is a treat. I've been using a fireplace for warmth, and uh, I haven't shaved or bathed <laughs> in, in two days here. A uh, case with a lot of people, I'm sure, though. Slowly, things are getting back to normal, sort of. David Biggie, News Team 10. For many people tonight, will mean another evening away from home in a shelter. With heat and power still off in many homes, 
Several thousand residents are expected to fill local shelters. Last night, hundreds of families spent the night on cots in gymnasiums and churches. Also part of the assistance, free food and plenty of hot coffee. And here's a look at the potential danger from falling ice. Large slabs of ice dropping several stories today from Xerox Tower. Workers were evacuated from Xerox Square for precautionary reasons. There were no injuries reported, though. Once the ice began to melt, once the weather started to clear, everyone had a better view of the devastation. We have two reports on the extent of tree damage. First, here's Ray Lovato. Field Street on the east side. McNaughton on the west. Not as glamorous as Park or East. But one thing that made them different from similar neighborhoods in other cities, trees, the legacy of when Rochester was a nursery mecca. A real sense of devastation, a real sense of loss. It's, it's heartbreaking. City-owned trees planted on the 500 miles of public right-of-way have a value, and the estimate of the loss is between 25 and $30 million. Especially vulnerable, softer trees like Norway and silver maples and ash. There's nothing left to salvage on that particular tree. It's, it's literally been totally destroyed. That tree will have to be removed. Now, when you look at the tree across the street, obviously there's been damage to it, maybe where the tree had been sagging down before it's now springing back up. The city's effort now opening residential streets. The real cleanup comes later and could take months. It sounded like an explosion almost when the, the tree broke and actually hit the house. It just shook. We feel, I think, a sense of relief now just to get the tree off the house and to get back to normal. Monroe has brought in 35 out-of-town crews and concentrating on only the most dangerous situations right now. All we're going to do today is remove the tree from the house. Tips for homeowners, use common sense. Just be careful. Don't try to do it yourself. It's just too dangerous. When it's all cleaned up, one thing is for sure. It won't look the same. Ray Lovato, News Team 10. No one has been immune from this ice storm. That's for sure. It's been tough on the golf courses as well. You know, it's a tragedy to lose a tree that you've worked hard to nurture, to lose any of the landscaping around your own property. And for a golf course, particularly one with a history of Oak Hill, it is particularly devastating. In golf, trees are planted not only for their beauty, but for specific strategic purposes. The history of Oak Hill is rooted in the planting of thousands of trees by Dr. John Williams, virtually all of them suffered damage from the storm, from the famous Hill of Fame, from the East Course, and the signature tree there at 13 to the West layout. Of course, Superintendent Joe Hahn says Oak Hill was set back by decades. Well, there's a lot of areas, there are a lot, a lot of parts of the golf courses where there's specimen trees that there's no doubt in my mind that 30 years uh, have been taken away from us. It hurts you, but uh, you understand that, uh, you know, you got to go on and you got to clean it up and get going. Rod Garstner, who's the uh, superintendent at Locust Hill, the site of the annual Rochester International LPGA tourney, says he hasn't seen a tree without some damage there, but no greens or tees were torn up. When our New Steam Time special on the ice storm continues, we'll give you the latest numbers on those still without power. And see how your town is stacking up. It's all ahead from your News Team. It was Wednesday, and the novelty of it began to wear thin. Mail delivery was resumed, but the telephone company was reporting more outages even as electrical service was being restored. It was a time for people to begin thinking about the cleanup and how to pay for all the damage. We had two reports. The first, Ron Plants. From city streets to suburban neighborhoods. People are doing what they can to clear away debris, clogging streets and yards. Some private contractors are working alongside public works crews in the city, and some may profit from problems that may take weeks to handle. There isn't much construction going on now, you know, so it makes work for us. It's uh, other, some people's misfortune is our good fortune. What happened? Ice Storm 91, a New Source 13 special presentation. Somewhere near 
lot of tree limbs down. Some poles are even coming down now. Uh, we estimate that it'll probably be a good 24, maybe 36 hours before we can get everything cleaned up. About half of us are without power in our homes. Many roads are officially closed. This emergency is not over. It will be some time before power can be restored to all of the homes. As the sun began its work, falling ice was everywhere. The ice is loosening its grip. It fell from the downtown hotel project this morning. In just the, the greenery around Rochester, I think a third of it will be gone. I can tell you right now, some people aren't going to have electricity for two weeks. You will have everything Albany can give you. It started out being fun, then it was different. All that's gone. It's a challenge. Now we're down to reality. Let's get it all back. Good evening. One week ago, March 4th, a day that will go down in our community's history. A quiet rain mixed with freezing temperatures turned into a violent act of Mother Nature. An act of Mother Nature you will not soon forget. The rain and those freezing temperatures created an ice storm that brought our city, our towns, and our neighborhoods to a halt. We learned a lot about ourselves. We learned to appreciate things we may have taken for granted, things we thought we never would have missed. We became closer with our neighbors and sometimes used our ingenuity to generate our own pedal power. The pictures we gathered over the past seven days are ones we may never see the likes of again in our lifetime. And because many spent the last seven days without power, we thought we'd show you those pictures, the highlights of the past seven days, highlights of a crisis that continues tonight, highlights of the first week an ice storm changed our lives. We begin with Monday, day one, a rude awakening. We now know over 303,000 utility customers were without power. Ice storms are beautiful to look at, but deceptively dangerous. About half of us are without power in our homes. Many roads are officially closed, and many that aren't are blocked by downed trees or wires or both. Without power, stoplights don't work, making intersections dangerous. My folks had pictures of when I was this big of an ice storm like this, but I guess my first impression is I'm a little scared because of our big tree behind the house. We're just afraid that that's going to go on the house. Overnight, the city took on an eerie look, not just what you saw, but the sound of the ice and the cracking limbs. The early risers were the trailblazers. Drivers on the road before sunrise were the first to weave their way around the downed trees and under wires. The first up and at were the first to see the devastation. Oh, it looks pretty bad. It looks pretty bad. It looks like a hurricane almost. It's almost like a hurricane. I come from California and... Uh... Boy, you got a mess out there. Trees, wires, limbs all over the place, trees falling here, trees falling. Man, I'm getting out of here. Police were out marking the way. Power crews were beginning a job that will last for days. And city firefighters were trying to remember the last time an ice storm did all this. One guy said 1959 was 1959 was bad. Right with daylight, the damage done was plain to see. Cars imprisoned by downed trees. Some cars were crushed. Yards are a mess. Curiosity seekers are out, but be warned of the hazards. Downed wires are hard to see, and branches are still falling under the weight of the ice. Even in the city, pedestrians face hazards. Watch the ice falling from Lincoln Tower this morning. It is pretty to look at, but don't be deceived. This storm packed a punch. It started early and it started fierce. Hours of pummeling, freezing rain, clinging to the trees, encasing them in icy beauty. But emergency crews knew it was trouble. 
house fire. This is our biggest fear right now. You know, because how, how the heck do you get in there? Daylight brought evidence of the storm's destruction. Many didn't even have to look outside to find out. The flip of a switch told tens of thousands this morning the power was out. A lot of tree limbs down. Some poles are even coming down now. Uh, we estimate that even when the storm ends, it'll probably be a good 24, maybe 36 hours before we can get everything cleaned up. The piercing crack of falling tree limbs would echo hundreds of times throughout the day. The ice storm froze everything in sight, ripped down trees and power lines. This is involving four poles down through here, two out on the road here and two back in there. The storm destroyed 60 of Tim Swain's 80 trees, many of which were 150 years old. Nothing to do, act of God. You know, you take care of your place and this happens, we'll just try to salvage what we can. It's not easy being patient when you're cold and in the dark, but RG&E says this is a situation that demands patience. They say eventually a crew just like this one will be on your street to get you out of the dark, but that could be the end of the week. They suggest it might be wise for people to find someplace else to stay. Peg Westfall's house had survived the night, but this limb let go about 11.30 this morning, landing right on her porch roof. All I can think of is the house is gone. <laughs> You know, that's the way it sounds. The ice also brought down all of Niagara Mohawk's main transmission lines, knocking out 26 substations in the area, leaving more than 60,000 NIMO customers in the dark. It couldn't be much worse. Everything that we have is down. We have, we have no customers in power right now. And I... Niagara Mohawk has brought in 120 extra crews to do the repairs, but it could be several days before all of Niagara Mohawk's customers are back online. Tree crews also work throughout the day. Meanwhile, Avon firefighters were called away from basement pumping to a fire in the village hall. Officials say the village's emergency generator was not properly installed and started the fire. For Livingston County residents, this was a day to cope. People lined up patiently to get into the Avon Big M. A portable generator supplied the power for a single cash register. For now, people were stocking up, unsure of how long it would be before life got back to normal. And as darkness fell that very first night, we realized just how truly in the dark we were. This RG&E work crew, like the many others working tonight, had its hands full trying to reconnect as many disconnected homes as possible. As workers struggled to reinstall the power lines, the biggest problem they face at this point is working in the dark. And even though the ice storm hit our area about 20 hours ago, workers still say they haven't made much of a dent at all in their massive workload. In fact, we may have seen just the tip of the iceberg. And because many realized it was just the tip of that iceberg, they needed a place to stay warm. Well, I don't think anybody expected anything this large. It is the unexpected that by nightfall has turned area schools into temporary homes. Maureen Lee found all the comforts of home for herself and her two children after first trying to make a go of it on her own. I tried to get the candles and everything, but we had no heat and we got like an electric, electrical stove, so we couldn't do anything. Rose Del Vecchio tells a similar story. It was freezing. It was just freezing. I was under blankets. I had four blankets over me. You know, it was just awful. I couldn't bear it. At another shelter set up at Monroe Community College, those who've been hardest hit are finding what any other night they would have taken for granted, a hot meal and a warm place to sleep. Well, I got home from work and it was really cold, and I just looked at the wife and says, that's it, pack everything up, we're going to MCC. I found out that the Red Cross has got a place for us to stay. Keeping up with the supplies, especially the cots and blankets, has been a nonstop job for the Red Cross. These cots here are coming from Syracuse, Elmira, and as far away as Erie, Pennsylvania, and still, they are not enough. We normally, in a disaster operation, you would set up one, two, three shelters, and we'd have more than enough cots. But we do have our neighbors to the east and to the west, and also our national organization, and that's where the 2,000 cots are coming from tomorrow. Ham radio operators at each shelter provide the critical link for getting the supplies to those in need. Uh, we received uh, 15 cots. Uh, we need 18, okay, 18 more cots. 
We have a total of 33 people here right now. And the system is working well for the hundreds who otherwise would have no other place to turn. But those who chose to stay in their darkened homes flocked to the stores for the comforts of home. At first glance, it looked like the Wegmans we all know, but a stroll down the bread aisle told the story of short supply. There were no loaves to buy, barely any bananas, and they were fresh out of flashlights. For Janet Gaines, even life in a third world country seemed more plentiful. The thing that gets me is I just came back from a trip to Africa, and we have less here than I had when I was in a small village near uh, Dakar, Senegal. So it's a rather interesting contrast. Hundreds of gallons of milk once sat here. Now this sign is the only thing with the word M-I-L-K on it. It has made people like Sean Mulvey improvise. The coffee mate uh, should help me, and maybe I can uh, sneak some by the baby for breakfast tomorrow in her cereal. And uh, that's probably preferable to using uh, some uh, heavy cream. With juice for the family and juice for the flashlight, the Reverend Enoch Smith and son Ian were ready to head home. The trip through the store was the easy part. Getting here required some doing. I have a CB radio. So I asked somebody over the radio where was Wegmans open and they gave me the location. So we drove from Gates to here to get the items we needed for. Needs are a relative thing. Just ask twins, Melinda and Marianne, with a quarter keg of beer and a bag of Doritos. So, uh, here, well, we live off campus and our heat and our electricity is off, so we're going to campus to party and spend the night. See, it doesn't have to be all that bad for Melinda and Mary Ann. This shopping trip fit the bill. When I was looking open the door, I said, oh my God, I don't believe this. It's sad because it's, uh, you know, it's a nice tree. It's What's going on in this neighborhood? Well, we just all kind of help each other the best we can. Tuesday, March 5th, day two, the meltdown. Just under 165,000 utility customers without power. As the sun began its work, falling ice was everywhere. Trees, hundreds of them bending, breaking under the weight. Power lines and downed electrical transformers entombed in layers of ice, sagging under the weight as ice slowly melts. And as the drops melted off of surfaces, sheets of ice gave way. Downtown, crews went to work erecting barriers to protect pedestrians from the falling ice. In spite of it all, many residents stood by in awe, admiring Mother Nature's handiwork. And our city has really been changed with all the landscaping <laughs> that's going on right now. On the ground, the damage was frightening. Entire neighborhoods transformed into desolate ruin by fallen trees. And back on the ground, just moments ago, Fry had this to say. The sun came out uh, today, but I think that we still have a crisis and that we need to exercise caution. What we're talking about now is, is uh, a press release that you now have in it, it states that we will be uh, 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 continuing with the state of emergency for another day. Even as many residents spend another night with no electricity or heat, and others work to restore order, others seem determined to try and find some normalcy amid what for many is the unbelievable. A bird's eye view of the ice. This is what the county executive saw as he took a helicopter ride this morning surveying the damage. With so many people still without power, the county and the city will extend the state of emergency. It is not something that says you cannot go on the street. On the other hand, we do want to uh, discourage people from going on the street until we get things further along and we can be sure that, uh, that uh, we're going to be able to wrap this up. Power crews are getting help from others around the state. Some are working on the big transmission lines that affect thousands. Others are fixing the wires that have fallen in backyards. Given what I saw with the flight with Tom, I would believe that our restoration will be moving at a fairly brisk pace. Although, again, I will tell you that it's going to be a fairly laborious thing to go to every house and restore the service that, that's been damaged. 
And today, the ice began to fall. Temperatures climbed above freezing, allowing the ice to slip from the wires and branches it had coated for better than a day. The pieces of ice falling from these trees right here are relatively light, but you really have to watch where you walk today or you are likely to get hit in the head with a pretty good sized chunk of ice. There was no getting out of the way of this falling object. Sam McEwen's remodeling project was almost done when the ice uprooted this tree the other night and made some more work for the carpenters. Actually, I didn't know it till the next morning. I heard the boom and I said, gee, it's thundering out there too, you know. The next morning, everybody was standing around, the neighbor next door and over here, mm -hmm. and my daughter was there ringing the bell. She climbed up in the tree, between the tree to ring the bell. And I looked, open the door, I said, oh my God, I don't believe this. <laughs> Elsewhere around town today, the melting ice caused some minor flooding, but the flood watches have been canceled. Yards are still a mess, though, and neighbors are getting together to chat about the cleanup job ahead and the ice storm none of them will forget. And as the ice melted, we realized the treasures we had lost and the greenery we will miss. Perhaps the most striking reminder of the storm is the loss of limbs. Trees that have taken tens of years to grow were scarred or destroyed in a few violent hours. Their branches lost the battle to literally tons of clinging ice and gravity. Tree experts surveying the aftermath say the storm has permanently changed the way our area looks. I would say in just the, the greenery around Rochester, I think a third of it will be gone. To many residents, it's like losing part of their home. It's, it's sad because it's, uh, you know, it was a nice tree. It's I remember when we moved in that it was not taller than the garage, so to watch it grow two-thirds the size it was when we came in is an interesting uh, process, a sad process to see it come down. One thing that's kept residents in this city neighborhood is its tree-lined streets, but now that the storm has passed, those streets are tree-littered. You get attached to them even though you kind of feel a little pain if they, when you have an older home and mature trees and all of that kind of thing. I think it gives you a feeling of, um, I don't know, comfortableness. This summer, the neighborhood will be a different place without the majestic canopy of leaves and branches that once shaded the lawns and street. Though the storm has passed, reminders of its fury will live on. The ice melted, but we were still in need of shelter and hot food. I'm just gonna put them on there. This hot breakfast is a welcome sight for those who stayed the night, though obviously it isn't quite the taste of home. Oh, I got a good couple pancakes wherever they are. We don't have pancakes. Oh, this is all we have today. The smell of hot food rouses some of the visitors from their makeshift beds. Just over 200 people are staying here because they don't have any power or heat. I'm here with my I'm here with my wife and my five kids, um, with no power and no utilities for the next few days. We don't have much of a choice but to remain. This young mother is also stranded with her three-month-old baby. She's grateful to have a warm place to stay, but still, it's tough. I had a very long night. He was up most of the time. He's not home in his crib, so he's crying a lot. Sharita, what kind of night did you have here last night? A terrible night. How come? Because I had a dream that all these trees fell on my house and crushed all my new clothes for, for my birthday, and I never got to wear them before. But even kids are learning how to make do, and everywhere you look, there are touches of home. This woman passes the time by playing solitaire. These folks are keeping busy by watching themselves on TV. Set up at Monroe Community College, those who've been... Some of these visitors may be leaving today if their power is back, but the Red Cross is expected to keep its shelters running at least one more day. We'll be open all day long, um, taking care of those folks that still need to come in. A comforting thought in these trying times. Amidst the trying times, we found beauty not only in the ice, but within ourselves and within our neighbors. This entire neighborhood has been kept in the dark. The storm that ripped through the area knocked power out and has yet to be restored. The McIntyres are getting by the best way they can. We've been uh, 
burning our candles, heating with a uh, kerosene heater, doing coffee in a saucepan. <laughs> but in the Strawberry Hill neighborhood, some of the residents are beginning to see the light, thanks to their neighbors. You see, half of the street has electricity. The other half is still without it. So the side with lights runs an electric cord from their homes to the neighbors across the street who don't have power. At least we have the freezer and we have the sump pump running and, and we're not losing the food and the basement isn't flooding and the people across the street, the Perez's, have just been fantastic. I can't say enough. Him and his two sons were in the basement trying to get all the water out of the basement. So then my wife says, well, why don't we just hook up and uh, try to help them out. Isn't this adding to your bill? Yeah, sure it is. But what are neighbors for? <laughs> and now the act of neighborliness has spread. In fact, several neighbors in the division are stringing cords across the road. And since the rain and the snow has slowed down and stuff, we haven't used a sun pump, we use the light. What's going on in this neighborhood? Well, we just all kind of help each other the best we can. Oh, we had to drive around for a good 10 minutes to find some place to get a cup of coffee. And we can't find a, a room to stay tonight, so we're going to have to drive back through roads we're not supposed to be on. Uh, I'm clever. Let's put it that way. Wednesday, March 6th. Day three, an all-out push for power, with 132,000 utility customers still in the dark. Tree crews cleared branches away from power lines so line crews could do their job, removing fallen lines from our backyards and hooking them back onto utility poles. We're making good progress today. Uh, we are finding a lot of limbs down all over. Our crews are calling back and saying this is worse than what we thought in some areas. The heavy tree damage is slowing things down despite the fact that the number of work crews is steadily increasing. Many of these workers are imports from around the state and up and down the East Coast. Meantime, some neighborhoods are going on their third day without power. In Penfield, Tom and Seal Brook are somehow getting by. Tom reads his paper bundled up. Seal cleans out her now defrosted okay. refrigerator. We're coping, we're not enjoying it too much, but we realize the extent of the damage and just have to be patient, I guess, and put up with it till we get some power. Many crews were working tremendously hard to get that power back on, but we found one state crew from out of town working a little less than diligently. This state transportation department crew was on the job today, but at times it was hard to tell how much was being accomplished. The crew working along Lake Avenue had three dump trucks, but only one was being used to carry away brush. The other two didn't do much. The Green City truck simply sat with its lights blinking. It still had the salt spreader in the back and couldn't be used for much. The state crew used its other truck to hold its tools and saws. The crew filled its one dump truck three times in the hour we watched. Each time, five men climbed into the truck to take the brush to the dump site. But in the meantime, the other five simply stood around, some smoking, while the truck was gone. At 2 p.m., the tool truck left for a break, a long one. We followed as the truck drove north to Charlotte, turned around in a 7-Eleven, and then headed south. It stopped at a McDonald's that was closed. The journey then continued toward downtown. Forty minutes after it left the job site, the truck stopped at Four Corners. About ten minutes later, three workers returned with coffee. They appeared to have time, so we asked, how's business? Darn good. Darn good. There's lots of it down there. Yeah? How come uh, for the last 40 minutes you guys have been driving around? Driving around where? Almost 20 minutes after the truck stopped, the crew chief came back. He told us the break started 10 minutes ago. Well, we had to drive around for a good 10 minutes to find some place to get a cup of coffee. Uh, we kind of thought people would bring us all some coffee on the job, but the, uh, nobody's done anything.